All right, so you finally made the decision to make the jump into a mechanical keyboard. Well, first of all, welcome to the community. There is a lot to take into consideration when choosing a mechanical keyboard, but luckily for you, the keycaps and the switches are usually interchangeable in a lot of the mechanical keyboards. So that's going to be something that I'm going to leave out. One thing to note there though, always make sure that the keycaps are going to be the correct size for you because some of these keycaps can get really, really tall and some of them can get so short that it's going to also mess up your typing feel. A good middle ground that I recommend is to go with Cherry keycaps. The Cherry profile is kind of very in the middle. It's very recognizable and it's a good starting point because it's right in the middle of anything lower like an XT8 and anything taller kind of like a DSA or the KAT keycaps. So really one thing that you have to keep in mind or the only main thing to consider is really deciding on what size of a keyboard that you need. There's a lot of keyboards out there. The most popular ones in the custom mechanical keyboard world are going to be 60 and 65%. A 60% usually is missing the arrow keys, whereas a 65% is exactly like a 60, but that extra 5% is going to give you arrow keys on your keyboard. So if you do navigate a lot with the arrow keys, I recommend that you go with a 65% at the very least. And then from there, you jump up to a 75%, 80%, TKL, all the way up to a 100% keyboard, which is something that you see on a lot of desk setups that have the number pad, they have the arrow keys, and then they have the whole separate QWERTY keyboard on the left. And usually the larger you go or the bigger in size you get on the keyboards, the less and less options you have. That's just due to the nature of the mechanical keyboard. Everyone that's going to be kind of getting into this hobby or getting to more custom made keyboards isn't really someone that's working at a desk job all day, isn't someone that's kind of inputting numbers or crunching numbers on an Excel spreadsheet. So they don't really make 100% keyboards that are very popular, but they are out there. So I definitely recommend kind of looking around, especially if you want a custom one or a premium one. There is a subreddit called Mech Market. I'm going to link it down below. And there you can get secondhand keyboards because if you decide to go with the premium one, more than likely you won't find one that's in stock. A lot of them are made in the group by method. So you will have to buy one secondhand. So look through there if you're looking for one that's custom. They do sell other pre-built. Obviously a lot of other companies do have pre-built options that are 100%, but your options are gonna be a lot more limited. And you guys know that whenever I do a comparison, I do like to give out the short answer. So the short answer here is if you don't mind the design of the keyboard and you're just looking for something that works, go with the pre-built option. There are going to be a lot of options out there that are pre-built they're going to be in stock and there are going to be a little more inexpensive than something like a premium keyboard now the brand that i do recommend is going with keychron they have a lot of options their pro series lineups are via compatible which is a program that's going to allow you to remap any keys on your keyboard as well as set macros that's something i use in my daily workflow so that's something that i look for in a keyboard and there are other companies out there that have their own software such as newfi has their own software i believe royal kludge as well has their own thing uh, those mechanical keyboards have those software but from my experience they don't work on mac os so definitely do your research look up if the keyboard is even available for a mac os software but as always i recommend going with the via because it's open source it's on the internet and as long as it works with that it's kind of guaranteed to work overall but if you do go with a budget keyboard keep in mind that there are other compromises that you have to make mainly being the design the materials that's used as well as some of the mounting options available for all the pre-built keyboards and the materials is one of the biggest things that's going to be kind of a down factor for some of these budget keyboards because a lot of them are going to be plastic that hard plastic material as well as when it comes to the design it's going to be a lot easier to mass produce a design that's made of plastic and that's kind of replicated through a whole bunch of keyboards themselves and this isn't honestly a bad thing if you look at companies like Keychron, a lot of their keyboards look the exact same especially if they're part of the same series Again, not a bad thing, but it is going to be a lot more cost effective for the company to kind of have the same keyboard and then just kind of expand the rectangle of the mold and then just have that single mold just printing over and over again. And then using materials like plastic is going to bring it in a lot cheaper, which keeps the cost down. Again, definitely not a bad thing, but that is something to keep in mind, especially if you're looking for something that feels a little more premium kind of going with the budget route you are going to be compromising there on the materials and then the design as well because like i said 
they all kind of look the same. And if you do look at the mounting styles, a lot of these budget keyboards do have the same exact mounting style throughout all of the keyboards, which is the plate mount style. And this really isn't going to be something that makes or breaks a keyboard. It's all preference based, but it is something to keep in mind that no matter what brand you go with, a lot of the time they end up sounding the same. And that's because the mounting style is the same and the materials they use for the case are the same. So really you end up getting the same keyboard no matter what brand you go with. And that's the exact same thing as well within a certain brand and again i'm calling out keychron because that's one of the more known ones it doesn't matter if you get a k2 pro a k1 pro a k3 pro or whatever one of their series if it's a k pro series they most likely will all sound very similar or exactly the same so really it just depends on what size you want and then obviously the compromises you're making is going to be kind of sounding exactly the same as any other keyboard so then that brings up the point of what really makes a premium keyboard, what makes it more expensive. And that's honestly going to be the exact opposite of what the budget keyboard is. You're going to get better materials, which will affect the sound profile. You get different designs. A lot of times it's just a single designer kind of creating a keyboard and then going with the group by method saying, hey, do you guys like my design? buy it and then i'll send you guys this keyboard design that i made and then at the end is also having different mounting styling options again a lot of these are going to be aesthetic kind of preference based so it really depends on what you're looking for i personally do like kind of having a more premium keyboard because it does affect the sound profile it does affect the typing feel and that's something that i'm into especially when i'm going to be typing on it like almost all the time especially if you're doing your full-time job you have your home office desk set up for your full-time job you are going to be typing on this keyboard at least seven to eight hours a day and not only that but a lot of these keyboards that are more on the premium side will have very different design features that you won't see on the budget keyboards like i mentioned before whenever you go for kind of a 65 percent or a 75 percent keyboard on the budget options they all will look very similar Whereas you look at something like mode design, the mode uh, Sonnet, that's a 75% keyboard that has an accent bar at the top. Before that, they had their mode 80 that also had some access across the side. You will look at brands like KBD fans. There's a KBD fans Odin. That's another one that's in stock. It has a kind of small LED display right next to the arrow keys and it has a different kind of setup. And that's kind of what you're getting when you go into a more premium keyboard. You will get a keyboard that looks different than any other one. And I can guarantee if you take it into the office, people are going to be asking questions about where you got that keyboard because it's definitely not something that you can just pick up off the shelf at a Walmart. And then lately, something that they're changing as well for the design is with brands like Mode, they actually allow you to customize exactly what you want the keyboard to look like before you even purchase it. They have different accent bars, different weights that you can choose from, different colors, which is going to allow you to kind of design the exact keyboard you want. Like I said, I have my Mode Sonnet. I chose the white top with the black bottom, kind of keeping it monotone. But if you wanted, there was definitely other options that you could have chosen from. And Mode really isn't the only company that's doing this, but it is one of the most recognizable ones because it's very popular. They kind of show you exactly what it's going to look like and they don't run a group by method, meaning these keyboards are going to be in stock and they usually do new drops every month, which kind of keeps the keyboard going and meaning you can always get this rather than only having one opportunity to get it and then having the keyboard shipped to you months and months into the future. But aside from the design, there really isn't any added functionality on the premium keyboard over the budget keyboard. There are really a lot of nice features on the design side of it, like the LED display, kind of having extra bars or adding extra accents, adding badges to the keyboard. But all of that is not really going to add any functionality. A lot of that is going to be more on the design side of it, which is a huge reason why kind of getting into the custom, more premium built keyboards is kind of buying a piece of art because it is going to be more design driven more aesthetics driven rather than really adding functionality to the keyboard overall the one thing i will say though is like i mentioned before if you're going with a budget keyboard make sure that it's via or qmk compatible because that's going to be that third-party software that's going to allow you to kind of remap the keys this is especially kind of important if you're going to be getting a keyboard that's not really quote unquote mac compatible so you can go ahead and go into the via software and kind of remap any of the keys to do whatever you want you can even set it to control your macbook screen whether that's brightness that's the control you can set all that up in the via app 
app. So that's going to be really helpful. And that's the only thing that I will recommend that you look at that is going to be kind of an added functionality benefit. All of the premium keyboards do come VIA compatible, but some of the budget options don't. Like I mentioned, there's brands that have their own software, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that software is going to work on Mac OS. So then that really begs the question of why would someone pay twice as much for a premium keyboard when you're not really gaining much in functionality and there are a lot of budget options out there that have that same exact functionality. And again, that's going to be very much design driven. That's going to be kind of supporting an artist, supporting the design. You really like it. You want it for the aesthetic. I kind of compare it to building your entertainment center. There's a lot of pieces of furniture. There's a lot of pieces of tech that you could get. But in, then in reality, if you want something that's going to look a very specific way, you are going to go with designer furniture. And whenever you go for designer furniture, that's going to be a lot more expensive than just simply going down to a Walmart and picking up a futon just straight up off the shelf. And I can guarantee that the functionality of that futon versus a designer designed couch isn't really going to be different. They're both going to allow you to sit down. They're both going to allow you to sit at your entertainment center and watch a movie. But if you go with the designer one, they are going to be using better materials. They're going to be using kind of better source materials and the design overall and the comfort of the couch is going to be different, but the functionality overall is going to stay the same. So that comes down to what are you really looking for? Are you looking for something that's going to look good? That's going to allow you to kind of set up your, your entertainment center, or in this case, your desk setup exactly the way you want. And then do you really care about what kind of materials are used in a keyboard? Which is why, again, straight from the beginning, I said, if you're looking for kind of a budget option, you're just looking for a mechanical keyboard that's going to work. I do recommend going with the budget option. If you don't care about the design of it, you don't care about what materials they're using and you just want a keyboard that's going to be mechanical that's going to give you that clicky clacky feel and that's going to work well with your system in the end just pay your bills first and then worry about what kind of keyboard you're going to be getting but what do you guys think do you guys think it's worth paying twice as much for a premium keyboard over a budget keyboard let me know down in the comments as always thank you guys for watching don't forget to like this video if you guys enjoyed it click here to watch another one of my videos and i will catch you on the next one